This video is sponsored by Cyanite Esports, the home of affordable professional Overwatch coaching. Our wide variety of highly skilled coaches will work with you one-on-one -on -one to develop a program tailored to your needs, and with our 100% satisfaction guarantee, you won't be disappointed. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back and look at how that evolved. Okay. Oh, so I want I want I want everyone to see. So here they move up front, right? We take fights here a lot of the time. And then the enemy team has their respawn. As soon as they have the, the, the Lucio is when they start backing up. They don't wait for the whole team to be up. The Lucio comes up, and they're they're already backed I up mean, to here, and now they're getting all the oh, way up. Oh, they don't have a maid. They can't play choke. I mean, it's just, like, as much as you can with a, like, let's say that they had practiced holding here a billion times. That's what they might do. Well, what do they know? No, see, the thing is, realistically speaking, I'm just going to do this for a sec. So, if they hold here, there's a fair chance that the enemy team might end up going here and therefore splitting the concentration of whatever's happening. Uh, if they hold here, where well, they can also be collapsed upon from different, from different directions. What really matters is this area, or like behind mm -hmm. the uh, dildo in the middle. So, the point is, they all the openings converge onto this area here. So... If they decide to split, the distance here is far enough for the GOATS comp of Finland to rush onto one portion of it and destroy it. Therefore, this is the most optimal position to hold if you do not have a May. I think you're overthinking May... it. I'm just saying. I, yeah, but I also I, I think you're really just overthinking it. Yes, there there isn't really a, a super duper solid reason to not take a fight here. I, oh, gosh, I gotta here like i think it's still just fine because you can still see when stuff goes this way and if they leave you know let's say they do send a doom fist or something or they had flanks or whatever that just means since you're playing goats you're just going to roll whatever's left the most immediate effect of backing out this way um is the enemy team wastes more time getting to the fight when you're on defense you want as few fights as possible when you're on offense you want as many fights as possible. And by holding up here, defending closer to the enemy spawn, you're giving the enemy team fights off cooldown, just making this short little trip from their spawn instead of all the way in here. So they're basically drawing out each fight as long as possible. Um, that's that's the easiest, simplest way to I think about that it. Reasoning. Okay. You, you're not going to let them get behind you very easily. But again, at this level, that's... I mean, they're not going to be letting people get behind them anyways. Um, and this, and they're not really playing a comp that's going to do that. They know what the enemy team is playing. They just don't want to be aggressed into multiple times with Speedy Lucio. Um, and they also might be afraid that the enemy Ryan and or Zarya has their ult already. Okay, so we'll see now. So they've backed up. <clears throat> uh, yeah. We'll be done in like 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. That break over extends. Okay, so he goes like he thinks he can go for the pin, and in in like maybe our tier of play, Zarya bubble plus pin equals somewhat safe pin. But already at our level, I wouldn't accept that. I like because because and and this is why one thing I want you guys to be able to do is exactly what Team Finland ends up doing there. Bubble, burn it fast like just focus it it doesn't matter don't don't think about the zarya charge just think about making the rhine useless rhine has no bubble you get stun on the rhine team kills rhine so bubble goes down stun happens rhine doesn't end up dying because he gets nanoed but they've already lost the initiative uh they've used a bunch of abilities and they're using nano defensively which is okay. Pretty sure that's a grav. That's that's the grav. Yeah, the grav's going in. This is where they'll get graved. So you've basically just committed ults defensively um, that really are much more valuable as offensive ults. I didn't actually watch this match live. I Me missed neither. this one. Yeah. That's right. No wonder. Okay, Can I so, point out something really quick? Of course. So, what I've noticed is like a lot of the grav combos have been 
with Diva, and I was wondering if we're going to try to do that more. Uh, yes. No, we're not. I mean, so the, the best combo with Graviton is just having your whole team there to shoot at it. Ults, mm -hmm. great. But just Reinhardt swinging, Diva missiles, Brig flailing, Zarya right clicks. That's um, that's plan A. My only issue with that, though, is their Reinhardt did have Shatter. So if they did go, like, ham, then there's a fair chance that they would have been shattered, and, like, counter-shattered. Okay. So, so I where? Mean, where do you mean? Diva bomb... So when, like, when Reinhardt's get grabbed... The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I honestly, they were they were assuming he had shattered from the beginning, probably. Like, there's no reason not yeah. to. After a first fight, you just always assume the Reinhardt has to shatter with how these fights go in close quarters. So they're playing with that in mind, I would say. Like, the shield up, they're not moving into them because they're already going with, with Zarya, um, with, with Grav, the Grav plan. Okay? And the Rhine just keeps the shield up. I didn't actually watch... Yeah, no, I mean, Diva Bomb there is a way to is a good way to force the Rhine to have to keep his shield up so that he can't shatter. Yeah, I I, I like it. Another way to prevent the Rhine from being effective is to just charge him away. Like I feel like they were probably intending to do that before the bomb goes off. Oh, he does hit them before the bomb goes off. Yeah. So yeah, that that's just part of the play. That's how you guarantee more value out of the bomb. Now. It is very hard to just, in the spur of the moment, be like, you know, making all this happen. This is something that you guys need to be, like, knowing as as Reinhardt, this is what I am looking to do because I know my team is setting this up. So we talked about this concept of enablers, right? Where we have a maybe primary DPS, secondary DPS, and they kind of work around each other. One of them is the one focused on getting on picks. The other one's focused on setting them up and flushing people out, that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to get to that. But for right now... I want you guys to notice the chain of events here. And when we get to these plays, that's how things happen. So step one in this case is uh, Zarya throws her grab. Okay, next plan. Uh, so then step two, Diva knows to throw her bomb in. Step three, and this, and Reinhardt knew about this from the beginning. Re Reinhardt's expecting and waiting for this from the beginning. Like even when they're all the way back here. Ryan is Ryan knows exactly what he's going to be doing so that when we get there, like he's already getting in position. He knows where the Reinhardt is. He's lined up with him. He's not like over here trying to like push through the enemy, uh, the others or anything else. He, he's right there and he goes for it. Farming a little bit of ult charge, doing it safely. Notice how little damage they are taking. In fact, almost none. And then they back all the way out. Neither Lucio has beat yet. Interesting. Okay. So, we've talked about ult economy. In this case, they have just one ult. And they know the enemy team has big aggressive ults. How do you win a fight in which you know the enemy team has all of their ults? Like, they, they definitely, if they commit these ults, can win. Uh, so... The thought process here... No, you don't. You you cannot stall. You take initiative. You ult first. If you let them ult, they guaranteed are winning. When when you're down this low, you can't rely on a Zen. Uh, you can't rely on any one ult to to win you through that. Um. They, okay. So they know that, and so let's look at how aggressively they get up. And and look, we got the brig here peeking in the corner because she's you know holding her shield, providing not just advanced information, but she's in the right position to get the stun off. So let's watch how this plays out. Speed boost, stun. Like, it happens before the Zarya can even react. So uh, let's look at that again. Zarya has not used any bubbles. She's waiting. She, she's gonna. She's trying to save... save she wants to they save her Ryan. Brig. Exactly. So they bubble the Brig. Brig goes in. There's no reacting to this. You, you, like, there, you cannot physically react fast enough to, like, seeing a hearing a brig start to shield back it's, it's instant it's just it's like genji dash you'd have to be able to like if you see the brig you you bubble immediately so the ryan has time to back up but no one here sees 
the brig being able to know how you're going to react and know how you're going to set up ha have this toolbox of of different positions you're setting up from let's look here yeah questionable grav from zarya there after you're already at such a disadvantage trying to turn it around Oh, that's 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 a good point Rosie makes. If you look at uh, you know things statistically, the presence of this Zenyatta makes a huge difference versus the Ana. Like j just as far as overall damage output cuz like you you think about it, healing is great except when you have a coordinated team where damage means no amount of healing is going to outdo like 2000 DPS whatever ridiculous numbers you get to when everyone actually focuses something especially considering the added 30 percent boost here plus the whole extra dps that zen does like especially against ghosts it's just super punishing yeah, so, yeah I'd we, like should, to start we should do more zen. we should do more zen i don't know yeah. if it's always a start on type of situation like Obviously, like they didn't even start on on the Zenyatta because there are other comps, and this is something I would I would have to affirm with Rosie. I don't know in what situations necessarily we would want Anna because of how strong this is, but like definitely, let, let, let's say they're playing dive. Let's say China's on dive. They might keep the Anna because Anna's better able to support a, a team that gets spread out a little bit more, as well as better able to support herself. <laughs> Um, another another factor on oh, whether you want to play an Ana is literally just if you have a really okay. good Ana player you can trust to get oh, yeah. like really good oh, we don't have one of those. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was and... coming. <laughs> Everyone did. Everyone did. <laughs> Everybody thought it. <laughs> but yeah, that's part of how these teams decide whether to play Anna. It's like, do you have an Anna player that can get like insane value out of her kit? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't Jonak the Anna? Yes. Yeah, well, but not he... in this game. But... No, no, no. I mean, like the the Anna, no. and even he ends up playing <laughs> Zenyatta <laughs> a lot, right? Well, he's also the Zenyatta. He's yeah. The Zenyatta. <laughs> yeah no, he's the Zenyatta. Zenyatta. He's like the he's best one. The yeah. Zenyatta. Yeah, he is these Zenyatta. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's easier in general, especially against a GOATS comp, to get value out of Zen. Just Not, not just for the damage, but his ult to save the team. Uh, let's watch how they take this then. So, they, they uh, same thing now. They back out all the way to their preferred holding spot. Okay. So, they don't have anything to let them confirm and, and get kills. So, like, they, they don't have any big ults coming up. So, they back out further. So, they're, they're, all, they're all backed out behind here. Like, again, taking the fight as late as possible prevents the enemy team from getting more attempts. That's part of it. But also, it gives them more time to get towards their crucial ults that help them win the fight. I mean, with, with GOATs, especially on the third, fourth, fifth fights, when, you know, both teams are going to have ults, you don't expect to win without an ult. I wouldn't say like it's going to be super duper tough to do, you know, the, the whole goats rolling in getting value, especially when the enemy has ults that you have to play around. So they back up and are playing to build ults. Let's see how it happens. So again, they, they backed out realizing that they don't have uh, an advantage there. Support ult comes up. Great. I want to point out that that Ryan didn't go very deep at all with his pin. Like we're not, we're not going like going to here. That's certain death. <laughs> going anywhere beyond where yeah. your team can really get to you, like the the range of your Zarya. That's death. Both teams have now dumped basically all their ults. Oh, and that blocking the shatter, but it zoned them out from the beginning. Here, so they've they. They've backed out. They they were here, and then they're kind of here, and then they're gonna be kind of over here, and then they go all the way back in. 
So just just watching here how they back up together. I don't particularly enjoy that the diva is over there on her own. I mean, it doesn't end up mattering because doing what a good team does, they're all focusing the important part of the fight. Like, just taking advantage of a 6v5 rather than turning and facing the thing that's not deadly. Like, they're doing the best they can to play against Finland. Um, but Finland's in a really strong position now that the enemy team has exhausted their ults. Uh, at least their, their playmaking ults. That bomb, I don't know. Like, it does give them a little bit of time because they're in the graph. I don't know if that's what she was responding to. Let's watch that again. Okay. There we go. It is last fight, but the the way the diva threw that bomb, right? That's one hundred percent contributing to the enemy Zarya being able to get that grab off. If you're diva and you just sit in your mech, even if that means you don't use your ult, um, worst case, you end up dying. Uh, losing mech and then the Zarya grabs you either way you've delayed it a little while but there's like you, you've by throwing your ult early you have zero chance of blocking it and you guarantee that the enemy Zarya will have at least a three second window to get a grab off both teams have now dumped basically all their ults yep. oh and that's blocking the shatter but it zoned him out wow okay